Hey everybody, uh, Cliff Ford here, and I'm actually here to basically uh, say something that I forgot to say in my previous videos like that. So, in the last video that I just posted, I believe the other day, uh, the final part of the Luffy vs. Nami video, Luffy and Nami Part Z, um, I basically mentioned in the video that there was something I forgot to mention that I was going to put in the comment section, but I think it just might be interesting if I just go ahead and make an, an entire new video and like that to basically just add that part in. Now, this video isn't going to be like super lengthy and like that. I'm only going to explain uh, that one part that I forgot to mention. Uh, I mean, you don't have to necessarily take it as like um, as something that was really important to be added and like that, but just for the sake of it, I'm just going to add it just for uh, simple, uh, simplicity reasons and like that, just because I feel like it might just... Um, it might not like overall change in people's opinions and like that, but just adding it just might add a, but might just add something to it for a bit of a, a helpful advantage and like that. Okay, but before I do, there was also something else I forgot to mention, and I feel I figured it might just be important. Okay, so I actually forgot to mention what the Z does not stand for. All right, because I figured some people were probably thinking Z. Well, this must refer to this guy. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't. So, uh, let me explain what the Z does not refer to, and then I'll explain uh the thing I forgot to mention yesterday. Okay. Okay, the Z does not refer to Zephyr from film Z. I'm sorry, but it doesn't, okay? It also does not refer to Lord Zed. So if you're thinking of a Power Rangers and Straw Hats team up, I'm sorry, but that's not the case. And lastly, it does not refer to a Zoro versus Zoro fight. Yes, that fight would be awesome. I agree. And you're right, I would watch it, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Now, let me remind you what the Z does not refer to. All right. So, now that we got that out of the way, it's like that. What I forgot to mention was something that happened during the Whole Cake Island arc, okay? Now, the Whole Cake Island arc was the arc where uh, Luffy, Nami, Chopper, Brooke, along with Pedro, uh, Peckhams, and uh, Carrot, all went to Whole Cake Island and, in order to uh, get Sanji back and like that, okay? Now, Peckhams is actually part of Big Mom's crew, but Peckhams was basically, like, the like not like the leader, not leading. Like, he was the one who was to basically... Um, it sort of like helped them get into whole cake on us like that. Help them. He was basically like a, a tool, like a use it's like basically be used as a tool in order to get into whole cake islands like that. Well, during whole cake island, most of the arc had Luffy and Nami basically together, or in terms of like a tag team and like that, where most of them, most of their uh, interactions and scenes were together and like that. Okay, so. Throughout most of the uh, entire arc, not all of it, but through majority of it, I should technically say, Luffy and Nami were together for a lot of things, okay? Uh, one good example could be, like, Luffy and Nami were together when they were both facing off against Cracker, okay? Uh, Luffy needed Nami's help a lot of times with defeating Cracker. Um, her ability to manipulate the weather and cause, uh, cause rain actually made it easier for Luffy to hit Croc uh, Cracker's, um, uh, you know, biscuit minions and stuff like that, because they were, like, super strong. Even with Army Hockey, they were strong, like, uh like super strong and the rain actually made it easier for them to get soaked and lot hit a lot harder okay um eventually but probably the biggest indication of the relationship between luffy and nami throughout the entire whole cake island arc is when they basically reunite with sanji and like that all right and during this moment luffy um and sanji have sort of a fight out okay they basically have a battle out okay now keep in mind no, luffy did not actually fight sanji in the regards that like he put up a uh, fist fight okay Luffy basically just let Sanji take all the hits, okay? I mean, well, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Luffy basically took all the hits that Sanji uh, gave, okay? That's what I should be saying. So Sanji just literally just beat the crap out of uh, Luffy, but it didn't really affect Luffy or phase Luffy and like that, because he basically just took it head on and didn't really, really face him. And you can see a lot of emotional scenarios here where Nami is basically pleading and asking for Sanji to stop. Up. We just want to bring you back. We just want to bring you back and like that. We just want you to come back with us. And Sanji's basically just saying, no, you guys need to get out of here. I want you to go and like that, okay? Which then results in, like, Nami basically pleading and asking for Sanji to stop. Okay, fine. You win. We'll go. We'll leave. And another good interesting point here to point out here is that after the fight ends and like that, Big Mom's army is on their way. Lami is basically just waiting there on the ground with Luffy as he's basically recuperating. And, you know, Luffy basically says that he will not leave um, or he will not eat again until Sanji returns and like that. And Nami is basically not, um, can't refuse to, like, leave her captain in this condition like that. But once Big Mom's army starts coming, Luffy tells Nami to actually get out of here and go and hide. Nami refuses to leave by his side, which then results in both of them uh, facing off against an entire army of Big Mom's crew. But then afterwards, both Luffy and Nami actually get locked up in... Uh, whole cake island uh, prison like a book prison okay and they're there in tune uh jimbei manages to come and get them out and then afterwards uh basically it all leads out to them uh, teaming up with uh, uh beige a and like that in order to help take big mountain down they managed to get sanji back 
they all uh, run in hot. They basically run after uh, after Big Mom's rage gets out of control. Or they get trying to get back to Sunny. And then the next big part here to point out here is when Nami is when Luffy is in the uh, mirror world facing up against Katakuri. Uh, Luffy breaks the mirror and manages to get a hold of Nami and basically pleads her and asks her to basically destroy all the mirrors on the ship. And Nami does it without hesitation. And you can see a bit of a memory in Nami's mind going in her head where she's thinking being that I need to trust Luffy's judgment. I, I need to put faith in my captain and trust that he knows what he's doing. There are times that Luffy does not know what he's doing when he makes uh, reckless decisions, but when it comes to fighting, Luffy knows what's better. Luffy knows what needs to be done more so than Nami does, all right? When it comes to other tacticians and other things, Nami is better at other things. But when it comes to fighting, Luffy is the superior genius to Nami in that regards in many ways, all right? No matter how you face it, it no matter how well you think, things like that, but that's definitely the case. But overall, I would have to say, like, while this doesn't necessarily add anything or give any clearness, however, the main factor I want to point out here between the relationship between Luffy and Nami is shows that even even no matter how old the dire situation may be inside that, Nami isn't going to, like, leave Luffy be no matter how high the regards are. Like, she's willing to trust Luffy's judgment, even though she has bad feelings or thinks this might not be the best way, right? But she's willing to trust Luffy's judgment overall, um, just to show, um, uh, just to show uh, basically um, connections and stuff like that. So sort of like that. Uh, that's all I forgot to mention. Uh, thank you so much. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and notification bells and keep up to date.